Hey guys, this is G for T, Survive and Thrive TV. Uh, we're here up in the mountains of uh, 29 Palms, and we're talking with a group of individuals, actually, not just one, but this is Ray, and he is actually discussing with us today about just kind of Americans looking for more freedom. Some people have called this movement Free Man on the Land, Sovereign Citizens, but you would prefer to not give it a label at all. Right. Talk about that. Okay. Um, over the last 15 or so years since I got out of the military, uh, I came to the conclusion, what you called waking up earlier, that uh, it seemed like we were losing more and more of our freedoms. And uh, I just fell in with people that were looking for ways to, you know, try to regain them. Of course, we understand that it's impossible to get everybody on that bandwagon. And uh, we just do what we can to try to preserve our personal freedoms and the freedoms of, you know, friends and family, ones that will listen. But uh, as you know, a lot of the people that uh, get involved in these type of movements are seen as rebels and uh, uh, people that just want to upset the system, uh, you know, tear down the, uh, the boat and this and that. But we're not that way at all. Uh, what we seek is what has been called remedy. Now, uh, from my reading of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and a whole lot of other things, that uh, my understanding was that remedy was always there. Now, I fell in with people that explained it to me this way, that America has one of the, uh, uh, the greatest uh, legal systems or systems of law uh, that created this country that gave us choices that you could either decide to be a slave voluntarily or you could live free. Yeah. And um, what does that mean, um, living as a slave? Um, a slave is someone who uh, works, has all of his labor taken from him uh, at no cost. He's given or allowed to have just enough to survive and work, but not enough to do as he wills. He's not able to come and go as he pleases. Um, to me, personally, a slave is someone that's uh, locked in to the current system. And by what I mean by the current system, it's the Federal Reserve System, the IMF, and all of these other uh, unseen uh, contracts that we were unaware of, that our parents actually sold us into. Now, a lot of my audience have, has been following you know, Ron Paul, the Federal Reserve, right. and they've come to this point where they understand that the system is rigged, they're living in the matrix. Right. Now, <clears throat> talk about the journey of where they can get to where you guys are at. Well, I can't say that we're really any further ahead than anybody else, but I can say that we're constantly looking. We're constantly I've been down quick. so many rabbit tracks, so many uh, for the last 10 or 15 years. I found things that uh, we thought were going to be remedies, solutions to the debt problem uh, in the so-called redemption movement. But it appeared it was working for a while, but the system is adjusted. They're just not paying any attention to it anymore. And one of those things was uh, involved uh, doing what the Federal Reserve does, that there is not one penny of any transaction on this globe that isn't initiated or settled with a signature on a piece of paper. Our money now is paper with signatures on it. And that's what the uh, redemption movement revealed. That when you look at the ordinary Federal Reserve note, for instance, everybody knows, if you followed any of the Ron Paul stuff, that Federal Reserve notes are not money. They're uh, promissory notes. But they're not backed by anything except the faith and credit of the American people basically, on the internet. Uh, one of them was uh, California Group, uh, Creditors in Commerce, and others. Uh, people like Gordon Hall, you may be aware of. Uh, and uh, this started, the awakening towards the redemption thing started with a, uh, back in the 70s, with a man named, uh, he doesn't like to be named, but I'll just say his name was Roger. Okay, He doesn't like to be named because he was uh, hounded, went to prison, this and that. Not because what he was doing was wrong. He was doing what the Federal Reserve was doing, but 
he didn't have their permission to do it, basically. He was using, and he had found, that uh, since all, uh, all commercial transactions start with a signature on a piece of paper, he figured out a way to do it. And he was showing people how to do this. And uh, this brings us to the Montana Freeman. Okay? Now, he had taught uh, one of the greatest legal scholars that ever lived in this country, uh, Leroy Schweitzer. And the reason that the Leroy Schweitzer story is not known uh, is because the OJ thing came up. And when they came down on the Freeman, the Montana Freeman, who were using this stuff and getting out of debt, paying off their farms, buying equipment. Uh, but the problem was people started abusing it, which was always a problem when people learn to uh, set off and discharge debt. Right? So that's what the Freeman were about. But they came in, they demonized them as racists and this and that. And some of them did foolish things, like they put staggering uh, uh, commercial liens on public officials and this and that, which may or may not have been right. I can't judge their reasons, but they had the reasons for doing it. That they found these remedies built into the laws. And the reason that most Americans are not aware of the beginnings of this was because of the OJ trial, uh, it took away all the attention. Why, what, from the Montana what, Freeman. Trial. What would be the good of putting a commercial lien on a public official? What does that do to them? Because, or what is it used to do to them? Okay. The, what I've come to learn or believe is that uh, if the Constitution, I keep saying if the Constitution is what it says it is, and it has remedy for redress of grievances built into it, correct? Now, I can't quote which uh, uh, amendment or article that's in, but we have the right for the redress of grievances. I believe that's in the first article. But um, the Supreme Court has stated that you can't sue the government, right? And all the states agree you cannot sue the state and you cannot, or the federal government, you cannot sue them. They, they're the sovereign, they're the king. And the king cannot be sued without his consent. Yeah, there are some instances where people have been able to sue, but with the consent of the government, okay? So the um, remedy for people who were uh, wronged by government officials who had violated their oaths of office and this and that, the only way they could get any remedy was to go after them personally. Yeah, and I believe that that, that is true. Now, some people have done it successfully and some people have not. Some people have done it simply by just filing, you know, uh, rights violations and things like that in the ordinary courts or in the federal courts, you know, superior municipal or federal courts. Now, that's a crapshoot too, because we know that game is rigged as well. Because uh, the judge, the prosecutor, the uh, attorneys, your attorney, they're all in the same, uh, same, you know, club, you know, called the bar bar association. Now, they'll say, well, uh, that has no bearing because we have our code of ethics and this and that, but we see otherwise. Right? Most people don't realize that when you hire an attorney that you have deemed yourself to be incompetent and, you know, a child basically, an award of the state, and they can do whatever. We, it's kind of a journey of freedom. Let's talk in generalities, uh, real big generalities. What are some of the first steps you think the common 99% person who's engaged in the system on a daily basis, mm -hmm. what steps should they take um, to become more free? What are some examples? Okay. My first example would be to question authority. And there's major Supreme Court precedent for that. that the Supreme Court has stated on at least a few occasions, I don't have the sites with me, I don't have my notes, but that it is the duty of anyone to, when anyone tries to assert authority over you, it is your duty to ascertain and find out if they, in fact, have that authority. And, and most people don't do that. What are the ways that they go about in finding out about their authority? The codes and the statutes. Right. So in general common general day... Laws. 
in general life, people run into authority with police officers. Right. They run into authority with you know property tax, mm-hmm. IRS, mm-hmm. income tax, right. and their job. There's a lot of different regulations that right. their code enforcement. Right. So can we just talk about that in general? Okay, in general, to to uh, bring this down, to distill this down in the very easy to understand concept. And I have a question: um, What authority does Walmart have over you? Walmart has no authority over me unless I'm on their private property. Then there's a whole bunch of rules that right. I have to follow when I'm in under their property. I'm they they have me under surveillance. Right. They check my receipts. Um, I can't run up and down the halls. Right. Uh, I probably can't speak even too loud. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably can't take photographs, videos. There's a whole set of rules that I have to follow once I'm on private property. And what my audience would say is, George, you have to, you have to abide by their laws because it's private property, and that's what freedom is about. And Could you address that? That's absolutely correct. Everything that you said is absolutely correct, especially if you are employed by them. And the point that I'm going to make is that Walmart basically is a private for profit corporation sure they have the right to keep order on their property uh... if somebody's behaving unruly doing the things that you said you know that are bad yes they have every right in the world to stop that and they will of course but my point is this walmart is a private for profit corporation they don't have any authority over you as far as uh... making you pay uh, part of your labor to them, uh, telling you that you have to have a Walmart license to use your car and so forth and so on. Okay, And McDonald's. If I own a local McDonald's and I put my employees into a uniform, give them a hat and a gun and a fancy cruiser and send them out to round up people to bring in to McDonald's, do you think that would work? No. Why? Because McDonald's is a private for profit corporation. And they only have authority underneath their jurisdiction, right, which is on their can, property. And what they can, and who the, who works for them, who they control. Now, the reason I bring that up is that most people are not aware, and anybody can check this out. You can go to Dun and Brad Street, or you can get a free membership to Manta, M A N T A, Manta dot com, and you can put in the name of any of these municipal corporations like the Sheriff's Department, the California Highway Patrol, the uh, Code Enforcement, or any other municipal entity or agency, the Sheriff's Department, right? You put their name in there, and what will come up on that screen, which is a basic description of that entity, and they are entities. They're private for profit corporations doing business as California Highway Patrol, San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department or whatever. Yes, you can put your city, your municipal uh, uh, courthouse. They're all private for profit corporations doing business as. And the major problem is that now most the people services would, have been corporatized. I'm sorry to argue, but most people would have the understanding that the sheriff or the police department, or the city, is is a government agency. It, there, it's not a private for profit corporation. That's Why do we have that understanding? See, because that's what we've been taught. We've been taught from from childhood, like pets. You play with the pet and you pet it and you rub its stomach and everything. You teach it not to scratch or bite you. That's what the system has done to us from the cradle to the grave. That we're taught we're taught to obey authority no matter where it comes from, any, we're, we're taught to presume that everyone that claims to have authority over us actually has it, and we haven't checked. We haven't done what the Supreme Court said we should do. I've done this. I've gone to uh, the Dun and Bradstreet subsidiary, Manta. I've typed in the names of these different entities, and they all come up as private for profit corporations, and that's why I started this little segment by asking you, what authority does Walmart have over you personally if you don't work for them and you're behaving yourself? Well, no, no authority, but they do have authority over the actions that you do when you're on their property. 
uh, yes, you have the certain you have the freedom to walk around and you know look at things and this and that as long as you behave yourself. And that brings us to the issue with the police and the sheriff's departments and such, uh, CHP, that under our system of laws, uh, there used to be a concept that uh, stated that if there was no injured party, there's no crime. Now, what we've been doing, what we've been experimenting with, uh, certain of us, and uh, one of them may show up here later, is to... Uh, make them show who have I injured by not using my turn signal. That's why I brought that DMV code with me too, by the way. Uh, who have you injured by doing a California stop if you didn't run into somebody? You know, what authority do you have to be stopped and detained absent a complaining party? That's the major principle of our law, right? Uh, what is it, uh, uh, the Roman statement was uh, quo something or other that had to do with uh, where is the body that a crime could not be in existence without an injured party or damage to somebody's party or uh, uh, crooked contracts that you defrauded somebody. Those were three elements of law that had to be present before you could be accused of a crime. So in your opinion, there's a huge overreach of government or for-profit corporation yes. uh, overreach of authority right. um, getting involved in daily matters when there is no injured party. In your opinion, unless there's an injured party, government should be stopping you, they well, shouldn't be ticketing you, and right. they shouldn't be seizing your right. property, personal property. Right. But the that happens every day. Crime. It happens every day. And the reason it happens every day is why do corporations exist to make a profit. It's illegal for corporations not to turn a profit. If a corporation doesn't turn a profit, it has to be dissolved. So, the system, as if you live in California, you know that they've ramped up the writing of tickets and this and that. Now, the uh, where it's hurting the people is that the, as the economy gets worse, the police are writing more and more tickets and they've doubled and quad tripled and quadrupled the price of these tickets for these infractions and offenses which according to their own laws are not crimes. Do we have a problem there? I think so. And that's what we are uh, uh, working on amongst ourselves to try to make these people show us where is the injured party. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's what we were talking about and in looking into these different areas, trying to find remedies to things that affect every one of us every day. If you haven't gotten a ticket, they'll get around to you eventually. Because I have watched personally uh, video and audio smuggled out of police meetings in their little, you know, I don't know what they call it, but their morning meetings, kind of like their formations where they are telling the police officers to just write tickets, write tickets. You, we know that they claim that there's no such thing as a quota, but what do you think? Everyone understands there probably right. is. Right, it's an unwritten policy because it would be illegal. But it is spoken to these guys, and like being a recruiter or something like that, you've got to go out, you've got to produce. That because these entities, these sheriffs, CHP, whatever, they are corporations, they must turn a profit. If the troops are not writing tickets, where's the profit? 